My name's Gary, and today we're going to talk about the Synology NAS 923+. Plus. We're going to be maxing out all the available options on this unit, except for the hard drives because we can upgrade those anytime we want. But the three things that we're going to be focusing on today is upgrading the RAM to 32 gigs. Then we're going to install two one terabyte NVMe hard drives so that we can really take advantage of the read and write caching that this unit has to offer. And finally, we're going to upgrade the networking to 10 gigs. So stick with me. Now that we've got all the upgrades done, what I really want to do now is test the network performance between my laptop and the Synology NAS. So my laptop already has a 10 gig interface on it, which I talked about in another one of my videos linked in the description below. And my Synology NAS already has Docker installed with an iPerf server running inside of a container, also linked in the description below. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to run this performance test and show you the network throughput that I'm getting. So what I'm gonna do now is just bring in my command line window and I'm gonna type out the commands that will allow us to perform this test. So we're gonna do iperf3 dash Darwin. We'll just auto complete that. Dash C, cause we're gonna specify the server that we're gonna be connecting to, which is my Synology NAS. So 10.217.0.50. I wanna get info every one second and I would like the test to run for 20 seconds. And then if we go ahead and click enter there, what we'll see is the test connecting to the Docker container and performing this performance test between the network on my laptop and the Synology NAS. So as this test is running through, you can see I'm getting you know different rates all over the place, um, anywhere from, it looks about eight and a half, uh, gigabit per second all the way up to um, I see like 9.29 9.33 gigabits per second 
So you can see that uh, once the test is completed, it'll say what the sender did and what the receiver did. So my laptop is the sender here. It sent 21.3 gigs at an average rate of 9.14 gigabits per second. And the receiver, the Synology NAS, did 21.3 gigs. It received 21.3 gigs at a rate of 9.14 gigabits per second. So I know what you're saying is why would you ever see these two different uh, things here? The reason why you would see two different things is if there were any retries and there was packet loss, you might see a difference in how much data was sent by the sender and how much was actually received by the receiver if, they're, if you're having problems with your network. It's not uncommon in an iPerf test to see some retries simply because this test is designed to max out your interface. So when you have a maxed out interface, it's normal to see things like uh, retries and packets being dropped, uh, not by your network per se, but by the client on either side. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and exit out of this. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and get the uh, NVMe read and write caching configured. So if we go into our storage manager, we can now see that we have built-in M2 cache and it is not being used. We'll go down to volume one, which right now I just have one volume that, is, that has all my disk in it. So what you would want to do from this point is go ahead and click create and we want to create an SSD cache. We want to mount that SSD cache on volume one. I only have one volume in my system, so it only shows the one volume. If you've created multiple volumes in your system, you can select which volume you want the SSD cache specifically targeted at. This is helpful when you might be using uh, one specific, specific volume for uh, storing files that are used very frequently and you need good performance on, and then you maybe have some cold storage where you're not accessing the files quite as frequently and you don't need the cache kind of taking up space, caching that information, and trying to serve it up when it's not necessary. So we're just going to go ahead and click Next here. On this page, this asks us if we want to do read-write cache or read-only cache. Some people only want the performance on the reads only. They don't do a lot of writing. It's just the same data being read over and over again. So it's not really as important to them. If you don't have a preference, I recommend just going with the default, the read-and-write cache, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to click Next, and this is the one thing that you need to be careful about when you are enabling the cache. Now, there's a lot of people out there that might want to upgrade the cache at a later time, or they want to take it out for one, one reason or another. You need to be absolutely sure that when you power down your Synology NAS, that you unmount and disable the cache if you plan on taking the SSDs outside of the unit. If you're just powering down the unit and unplugging it, that's fine, you don't need to worry about that. But if you're going to be taking out the SSDs, you need to unconfigure the caching functionality of the unit. Otherwise, some of the data that's been cached to the SSDs that hasn't been written down to the disk yet can get lost, and that's basically what we're being warned about here. So we're just gonna say, I understand, and we're gonna click continue. Now we get options of like what we want to, how we want to configure the RAID array. I don't even know why they necessarily give you the drop down here. Maybe they have a future unit that's going to be coming out that will allow you to put more SSDs in so that you can have a, a little bit more redundancy beyond the RAID one. But for a RAID one, you're going to really going to get the best read and write performances um, on RAID one in this particular instance. So we're just going to go ahead and click next here. On this page, we need to select all the disks that we want associated. Again, this unit only allows for two uh, SSDs, so we're going to go ahead and just select both of those SSDs. You can see they're uh, both one terabyte, and we're going to click Next. So it says, please note the following regarding the selected drives. These are not Synology drives. So I have not purchased the Synology, Synology drives. I purchased some uh, off the internet. Uh, that I thought would be comparable to what Synology was offering. And there are some restrictions, not from a caching perspective, but uh, using them as hard drives and this, that, and the other thing that Synology calls out on their website. They also have a list of drives that you can uh, use, which you can see there's a compatibility link here. But we're going to go ahead and zip this because we're not necessarily worried uh, about some of the things that Synology is in this case. So we'll go ahead and click Continue. And I want to use all available space. Uh, you can see that it's telling you that, you know, required system memory for the amount of caching that we're going to be using is this. That was also one of the considerations I took into place when I upgraded the RAM on this unit. 
and then I'm going to pin all of the B BTRFS metadata to this SSD cache. This just adds another level of performance to the unit by allowing us to take the metadata associated with the files on the spinning disk and move those to caching to speed up how we find how the system finds files um, when you're accessing data. So we're going to enable that and we're going to go ahead and click next. So we got our finally kind of confirmation settings here and we're going to click apply. And then it's going to say that, hey, I need to erase these disks. So if you've never used these disks for anything else, you don't need to worry if they're disks that you may have uh, tipped from a different unit. You might want to just double check and make sure you don't have anything on those. But we're going to go ahead and click OK here. All right. You can now see that our M2 drives have been configured and they're set up, they're in this right away, and then we can see right down here that they're currently in the mounting state and getting ready. So now what's happening is you can see that the data is being pinned, the metadata is being pinned to the SSD cache, and it's telling you that percentage. So right now it's moving that from the spinning disk and on to these SSDs so that we can increase our performance. So we'll go ahead and let that run. So what I do want to show you is that while this is running is that I do have all the configurations done and we can see from the info center that we do have the 32 gigs of RAM being recognized by the system. And if we go over to the network interface, you can also see that we're currently running at 10,000 megabits per second and full duplex MTU at 1500, which is completely fine for 90% of configurations and home users and small businesses out there. These settings will change a little bit uh, as far as like the MTU will change a little bit for maybe larger businesses and enterprises and depending upon how they're actually using the unit. But right now, that's all fine for us. So let's go back and look at the disk configuration and see where we're at. All right. So we can see that that's all completed. You can see that our SSDs are in a healthy state. We have read and write cache enabled. All of our metadata has been pinned uh, to the SSDs. And we can see right now that our cache hit rate, which you'll see this number change, we're currently hitting 100% for everything that's being accessed from the unit. All right, so now what we wanna to try to do is get as close as we can to real world performance testing of reading and writing files to the Synology NAS. Now, it's important to note that this test that we're going to run is also going to be running over the network as well. So that 10 gig connection that I have between my desktop and the Synology NAS is very important in some of these numbers that we're going to see here. So the tool that I'm using is called Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, and it runs a number of different tools once you click the start button, but we're not really going to focus on that as much as just the general numbers that we're getting out of the tool right now. Also, I have Activity Monitor opened up in macOS where you can currently see the received data per second and the sent data per second. So this will tell us what's going on with the network interface and this tool, Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, will tell us what's actually going on with the disk inside the Synology NAS. So I just want to verify that we have a one gig test selected and then we're going to click this start button to see what kind of some of the initial performance numbers we're getting. So these numbers will fluctuate over time based upon what's going on with the Synology NAS, what's going on with your network, and also how much CPU utilization you're doing on your computer. So after a couple tests, you can see that we're in the high 600s on both the reads and the writes for the one gig file test. And if you're looking up at the networking, you can also see the networking reflecting those speeds as well. So I'm going to stop this test and we're going to move over to a three gig file. I plan on using this system um, to work on approximately three to three and a half gig files. So it's very important to me that I'm seeing the sustained reads and writes with those files. And as you can see, we're approximately in the same range. And again, you will see these numbers fluctuate. I might do this test again and see eight, 900 megs, and I might do it again and see four or 500 megs. It all depends on what's going on in the Synology, what's going on in your network. There's a lot of different factors that plug that play into this, but I think we're seeing some very good numbers that'll get me through the workflows and the things that I'm trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this test, very important to note, it is not testing the cache that's in the system. The cache of the system is more for files that are being accessed very frequently that aren't changing a whole lot. 
this performance test is changing files a whole lot. So we're not really seeing the extra added performance that we would with the SSD cache in this unit. But I'm very happy with the numbers that we're seeing here. And I'm impressed with the way that this unit is responding. All right, now that that's done, let's talk a little bit about who I think this unit is for. So I think this unit is phenomenal for the home power user. Somebody who's looking to get in at a relatively low price point and have a piece of hardware that'll grow with them over time. We've talked about three of the key upgrading points of this unit in this video. We've talked about upgrading the RAM. We've talked about adding SSDs that we can use for read and write caching to help with the performance of the hard drives in the unit. And then we talked about upgrading the network. Now, the network might not be so geared to home users, but I think this is a really good point where you start talking about the small to medium businesses. I think this unit is great for small to medium businesses as well. It's a unit that you can basically sit in the corner and really don't have to worry about. All you have to do is pay attention to the status lights and maybe, you know, replace a hard drive every now and again. I also feel that this unit has a really good place in the enterprise. Maybe not in your traditional data center, but if you have satellite offices that just require a lot of local storage, I think this unit is great for that. It gives you the ability to remotely manage and monitor it. And then if you need to swap out any hard drives, you can have somebody locally on the site do that very, very simple task. I'm more than happy with this unit and I would recommend it to anybody. So with that said, it's time for you to make your own decision. But thanks for watching my video and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.